That's right. Juicy. Yeah, and welcome, welcome, welcome. Once again, boys and girls, it's been a long freaking time since I've been on YouTube. And I brought I brought one of the original OGs. Oh, the OGs, the OGs. OGs. The OGs. <laughs> Eric Andreas, also known as your guitar sage. Dude, you've been like, you're you're one of the, the first pioneers of the YouTube. My goodness. If you go back and you look at some of those original videos, I should have, <laughs> I should have never been. I, I love I love the old the old pictures of like the the, the records in the background and the like, light coming and the light I mean, coming just, in that was back in the day in YouTube where you could just literally upload anything anything like, goes. guys playing guitar yeah. I'm gonna watch see that was perfect that you, so you're a computer background guy though so you maybe you were like this YouTube thing mm, yeah tell me yeah, about very, it yeah very much so <laughs> well you know what for for me what it was it was always uh, you know I was teaching lots of one on one lessons yeah and like 
for whatever reason, uh, yeah, somewhat of a technology. I'm a, I'm a tech geek. Yeah. A little, little bit. Yeah. I mean, I don't know how to work Ish. on cameras and Work. Stuff, but <laughs> yeah, I was. Now I'm now I'm too busy to be. But uh, but back in the day, yeah, I was kind of a, a tech geek. And just the fact that I could upload something and go, yeah. oh, look, at people are watching this video. How cool Crazy. is that? You know? Right. So what are your top three things to start off say somebody wants to improvise mm-hmm. right and they want to know how they, they got their rhythm down which you know everybody should do first anyways mm-hmm. it's tough though <laughs> yeah but say that they have their rhythm down they got a sense of time uh what are the top three things that you would recommend to people to start to be able to not just copy licks mm-hmm. but to actually be able to create and to improvise on their own like what do you yeah. teach people like first three like gotta know these these are the golden rules yeah, uh, you know, whether you know the neck or not, knowing your tone center is really important. Okay. And, you know, first chord, last chord of a song, last note of a chorus, uh, any other way that you can find out what the tonal center is, you can take the pentatonic scale, move it up and down the fretboard while the song is playing. <laughs> and so, you know, that's, that's I do that the last thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But find out what your tonal center is. Okay. Once you find out what your tonal center is, find out what works over it, major or minor. And you can do that easily with the pentatonic. So if we're talking about A, right, then you could use either A pentatonic so or A minor. A yeah. A, a major or minor? Yeah, it doesn't matter. Okay. Okay, so there we have a major chord, but, and so, so technically, it's rock and rollish. I mean, it could work, but if you're talking about a whole chord progression in the key of A that's yeah. not bluesy, that's that that, pen, that A minor pentatonic won't work. Okay. So in that case, or it probably won't. Uh, and, and the other way you could do it is play the same scale, but put your pinky here. Oh, check it out. Right. Now we got that same. minor then you would just move it up here and play it play it right there and you can okay. do that all over the neck so once they know the major or minor yeah then it would be being cognizant of what the chord is that's being played sure and a great way to do this uh uh robbie calvo and i just did a video on this on Dude, he's vamping master. so good he's such a great player so and good. and uh and so, so soft spoken. Oh, yeah. I call him the NPR of guitar. Yeah, and he's got the Barry White voice. He's like, so today yeah. we're gonna do the smooth. Moods. Smooth. <laughs> he talks like he plays. Exactly. Smooth, but you know, taking one chord and outlining that chord. So if you're playing a lick, uh, if it's that A major chord yeah. again, right? Yeah. Then what I would do is, if I knew what my scale was. But here's my chord okay. right there, and I can, basically the chord notes are going to be the notes that you want to rest on. So you can okay. play your lick, and then boom, it's going to sound so much better sure. than just meandering through the scale. We've talked about okay, that Okay, so you're right? basically saying to be able to see the chords inside of whatever scale you're playing. Yes. So you know which notes to yeah. land on. Yeah, and, and for a beginner, you really just want to take one little section of the neck. So the way I teach sure. uh, phrasing is uh, called, it's it's minimalistic playing, uh, which is how I play that's anyhow. How roll. <laughs> that's how I play anyhow. <laughs> and, you know, it's you're in, you can only be in one part of the neck at a time. So even though you see Vi or, or see Barry Vaughn or whoever just all over the neck, yeah. even though they're doing that, and it looks like they're thinking about the whole fretboard at once, they're not. Even they're they're thinking very quickly. Yeah. But once they're here, they're here. Once they're here, they're here. Once they're here, they're here. Yeah. So whatever the shape is, that's what they're thinking about at that mm-hmm. moment, right? So I always say get used to like for instance with blues. Can you play that that blues? Uh, uh, you want a major that, or minor? In, uh, a. That, Same thing we're doing. Yeah. Okay. So here's the four of the chord, which is what you're playing there. The which is the, uh, that note works well over that. And then we have the, or the one chord again, right? So I would say, if you want to get really good at this, take the the one, the one, the four, and the five, and you can use those for- Are you using a D shape? Is that what you're- So I'm using like a, it's like a D minor shape. Oh, okay which is just part of the pentatonic, but uh-huh. uh, if I'm thinking about you're playing that. Are uh, you taking a major chord or minor chord? So you're playing a major, but you can still use okay, you gotcha. know, the minor pentatonic yeah. over that. Yeah, because they share two of the same notes regardless. 
Yeah. yeah. And then go to that four chord. Yeah. So really, I'm just playing your bass note, but I'm playing it up here. And then go to the A again. I can noodle, noodle a little bit. Yeah. While I'm waiting for you to change your chord. Now I'm bending up to that yeah, E. e yeah. And I'm gonna resolve it to the D. Uh huh. So really, if you want to start off real simple on this, here's the A, here's the D, here's the E and just work that. But I like to do it from this part here because you can, you're bending up. Check you out. And, and your when you're doing that, it just sounds, sounds better. First right? finger not fall <laughs> off. Yeah, I don't normally bend with my first finger, but so you, I do for some blues. Are you, uh, in the beginning, so would you just say, basically stick to maybe just root notes, like pick four notes? Yeah, I call just... it chasing the chord, where you're literally just playing the, the, the okay. note of the chord, uh -huh. and then in, in one little tiny section of the neck, and, and getting to speak that way. Because if you think about a child, uh, I say this all the time, when they're three or so, they have a really small vocabulary, but they can tell you a lot of stuff. Yeah. I gotta pee, I gotta, yeah. I gotta Thirsty. I'm hurt, hungry. I'm, I'm hungry. Boom, that's all they need. They don't need to know all yeah. these other words that we know. So, uh, and that's the way you wanna think about phrasing, yeah. in my opinion. Huh, so yeah. like, um, would you, do you take, do you get them there by showing them like little shapes, like A, D, E kind of stuff? Yeah, or so like, the easiest one to do is, this one little, like that little lick. So I'm playing, you know, five, seven on the D string, okay. and then a five on okay. the G. So if I play the A. Mm -hmm. So I'm resolving, I'm kind of yeah. landing on the tonic, okay. bending and landing on the tonic D. again. And you can yeah, you play this. that same one there. Okay. And that just gives you three different places on the neck. Yeah. Actually, six places on the neck, because then you, you can go up. <laughs> right? Dude, it, you know what's so funny? And is, it's really the same thing over and over and over again. This is going to sound so silly, but like, and I'm not kidding when I say this, the last month, mm -hmm. let's say, you know, like I, I play pentatonic a lot, but I think we all have our same patterns that yeah, we, that you we get use all the time, in. right? And so when I would see a lick like... Mm -hmm. I've used that a billion times, but like the other day I was goofing around, you know, and, and playing out of the positions or whatever. And I did like, it dawned on me like, oh, that same lick is right there. Isn't that crazy? And you've been playing for how long? And I've been playing for 30s, I, but like. I know, dude, it just happens to me all the time. I'm and like, then what, it was what, just what? like, <laughs> you know, I was just like, oh my God, how did I play for this long? Because then you start to think like, the cool thing about that, and, and you know, I would say like what you were saying about octaves, mm -hmm. really hammer that one home yeah. because then you know, even though the shapes are different, you can play the same licks, but when they're in a different spot, then the whole world opens up because then you can play that same familiar lick, but you're in a different kind of shape pattern. Yeah. So the intervals of around where you land could be different, yeah. and so it breaks you out of that. So it's not yeah. So yeah, that same monotonous. Same yeah. The and then what I also thought was cool was I really like the sound of that step and a half. So I was like finding all the different spots where I could do that, and I was just like, how is it that I got this far in guitar and never? Yeah. Put that together, you yeah. know what I mean? Or, I think I, that's everybody yeah. too. Because you hear like, uh, there's so many students, uh, students that are in my course, I, I hear that all the time. I hear people say, man, I've been playing longer than you have. And yeah. I didn't know, like, <laughs> no one taught me this stuff. You know? I know. And I'm like, I know, my, my teacher didn't either. Yeah. And you don't, you don't What don't you teach? You've got like 470,000 videos in that course. <laughs> and no, I mean, well, like and that's why I've started getting other teachers in there too, because I'm, I'm, yeah. Uh, you know, well, I mean, I can only teach so much before right. before I before I'm like, well, I that's not me. I'm not the guy. Yeah. Like, if you want to learn jazz, I'm probably not your guy. <laughs> you know, come on, yeah, your your jazz. I, mean, I can guitar. teach some basics of it, but that's about it. Yeah. So if you want someone to take you to where you need to go, find the guy, and mm -hmm. that's kind of why yeah. I'm, why I'm doing what I'm doing is just because I, I would love to have. I'd love to have classical well, lessons see, in there. Well, the see, I, 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 my favorite part about doing that and bringing mm. other people on board is then you inadvertently get lessons. <laughs> exactly. Because <laughs> I'm sitting there like the editing everything and I'm like, right. Yeah. Like I would, there's so much of it when I would do stuff with Tim, like 
And people say this all the time. They're like, man, that you, you can hear his influence on you. And I'm like, yeah. well, I've edited thousands of hours of footage of him. You know what yeah. I mean? I mean, literally I have like hard drive after hard drive of him playing and, yeah. and, and you just see it. And it's sometimes even just seeing somebody do something is enough to like trigger. Yeah. Cause I, I'm like, I'm more of a creative type. Like I, I'm pretty ADD when it comes to learning songs. So like Van Halen, for instance, if I know it's my favorite band, but if yeah. I know 10 Van Halen songs all the way through, it'd be a freaking miracle because right. what happens to me is like, I start learning it and then it inspires me to go somewhere yeah. else. And yeah. that's the same thing with like bringing other teachers in. It's like, it gets you to that point where you're like, right. You know I mean? It's that yeah. inspiration. And maybe it's just, you know, some guy doing a chord differently or yeah. a different way to do an arpeggio. Or I was watching, uh, I was watching something on uh, RJ's story the other day, RJ Ronquilio, yeah. a great guitar player. If you guys don't know beast. who he is, he's a great guitar yeah. player and a great guy. But I was watching him do something the other day and it's nothing I didn't know, but it's something that I didn't know. Yeah. It's like, and I just watched his hands. He was doing some blues. Yeah. And so I don't end, I don't typically end my scales like this. Like if I was gonna do that, I would put my pinky here. And I watched him go, which yeah. I've seen you do that yeah. a lot too. Uh huh. Right. Slide down. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, well, God, that's how I'm gonna do it from now on because yeah. that just feels so much better. Well, and it, and it puts me, and it, it's, this is weird. You gotta arc your hand mm -hmm. and it gives you a new place to be on the neck. Yeah. See? <laughs> Yeah. That story is yeah. the exact opposite for me is I saw Tim. Tim does it the way you do it. And I was like, I never like this? would have thought to do that. Like instead of hitting the third, like say you're here. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I always hit here, like you're yeah. saying. And I saw Tim do it. And I was yeah. like, What? I never even like I never even thought about yeah. that. But that's kind of his go-to. And I was like, Yeah. How funny. And see, so it's just different. It's different yeah. ways to say things. But it, to me, it's like if someone could just sit there with their guitar with a looper pedal, number one tool you can get besides yeah. your guitar is a looper pedal. Yeah. And just play one dang chord. Yeah. And just bump, just something with a rhythm and find one little part of the neck. Don't be a hero and try yeah. to play all over the place. It's never happened in the history of ever. Yeah. Stay in one place on the fretboard. I mean, honestly, right? <laughs> totally. Everybody thinks, oh, I need to learn a bunch of modes yeah. and do this, that, and the other thing. And it's like, that's fine if yeah. you've gotten the basics covered, but just focus on the basics. Yeah. Stay in that one part of the neck, you know, two, three strings mm -hmm. with the, the notes that are available in that scale, yeah. but you've got your little chord there. So if this is the section you got there, that little G, Top three strings there, you're. And you can chord. hear, yeah, you can hear just resolving there all the time. And you're not getting complicated. Yeah. Do that for a while to where you can really speak and you can yeah. do a whole solo right there. Yeah. Albeit it'll be a, a bare, bare bones solo, but yeah. again, listen to any country song that's not on the radio right now unless they get. Yeah, Brent Mason in there or something. It's all real basic, <laughs> right? You know, and it's by killer players that can yeah. play a lot more. But that's what they're allowed to do. Well, and to your point, you could take that shape, you know, those same three notes, and if you moved it to here, they're in a different order. Now you got a whole yeah. yeah now so now you you've got a whole new the same notes, but you now you have a different way to do it. Yeah, and you're just resolving to all the notes right there in that. You know, we're talking about the cage system here, yeah. you know? And then what happens with me is I'll see that and I'll go, oh yeah, and then there's this part yeah. of it too, so. That's great for the double stops, that whole. Yeah. 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 So good, that Yes. Yeah, okay, so you got right key center, mm -hmm. and then know your notes, mm -hmm. and then the third one is what you, like pick, pick a yeah, chord you know, tones knowing where Yeah, knowing where your chords are, mm -hmm. now, so having knowing the cage system is part of what's going to get you yeah. there, but that's only part of what's yeah, going to get you. That's more of just like, here's the map, yeah. here's the U.S. map. That's not going to yeah. get you to someplace local. So you want to think locally. So, uh, okay, we got this one chord. Now mm -hmm. don't think about the whole chord. Just think about the top two or three strings. That's yeah. where you're going to be soloing yeah. usually anyhow. Start, you know, learn all your 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 bits, your, your noodly bits here on, yeah. yeah, I said noodly bits. <laughs> On one through four, you know, just get that because right. you're not doing a lot of soloing on, on yeah. strings five and four anyhow, sure. or five and six. Um, so just 
get familiar with one little part of the neck. Unless and you're Billy Gibbons. What's that? <laughs> Unless you're Billy Gibbons, sure, you know. Ow, ow. <laughs> well, you know what's f- funny is we were um, jamming over the 145, but then we, we I was telling you how I like playing more kind of rock and roll style yes. progressions. Mm-hmm. And to your point of, of staying in one spot, um, this is what the cage system I thought was the best part of it mm-hmm. is you can do that. So if yes. like if it's G, D, sorry, my guitar is a little out of tune, E and C, right? Say I know where this G is up here. Mm-hmm. So you can use the, the, the D shape of that chord, right? Well, yeah. then my next chord is D. Perfect. And I didn't even move, right? 100%. And then the next one is the E minor, right? And and this is one, gold. This is gold. And by this way. is the next chords right here. Right? Which so is a I, form of a C chord. Yeah, C so chord. if you do the chords slowly, right? Do them slow. Perfect. Yes, that's that. that you know is, what I mean? It's that's everything that like when somebody showed me, the shredder of all shredders showed me that Guthrie Govan, like f- freak of nature guitar player, mm-hmm. but he's like learn the cage system. And I was like, okay. Mm-hmm. And then once I saw that, I was like, that's how they do it. Yeah. But they just can do that. You know, we did that here. But the difference between knowing the cage system, like yeah. most of you know the cage system and know it the way you're talking about yeah. it, is is a matter of thousands of hundreds of hours well of right and you then know. what i do is I, I tell people take five frets at a time yes learn that spot so yeah. now if we're here you know it's the same thing okay and then where's that that's and that's gold because those yeah. are all the notes out of the scale but yeah. as the chord plays yeah you get all the choice notes so it's literally like playing the cage system on the top three four yeah. strings and that, yeah, that's magic. If well, and then the, the mode that you brought up, the modes, and I, I always tell people, if you know if the if it's in major or minor, yeah, and you know the pentatonic mm-hmm. shape in whatever it's major or minor, yeah. if you can see the chords of the song, mm-hmm. you're gonna know what the mode is mm-hmm. because there'll be chords and notes in that chord that doesn't fit in the pentatonic scale, mm-hmm. and it builds out the mode. Yeah, you know what mm-hmm. I mean. So yeah. it's like everyone gets so hung up on modes. And I'm like, just be able to see the chords, right? You no, know, like what you said, whether you're in major or minor, and maybe that those pentatonic shapes, and then examine that chord progression and see where are the notes yeah. of these chords that aren't in my pentatonic, and it builds the mode yeah. shape out yeah. for you. Yeah. And I think it does it in a better way because it, um, when you just learn the mode, it's easy to learn the three note per string shape. Yeah, now you just... It's the same thing you did with pentatonics, right? right. You, you just play the big shape, you know? Yes. Rather than concentrating on the notes that Within make the chord, it important, yeah. important, you know? Dinner's, dinner's ready. It was like, yes, that's it, ding, sold. <laughs> the light, that was the light bulb going Another on UGS me member now. buys the full suite. <laughs> <laughs> Cha-ching. Yeah, exactly. All right, man, well, thank you. That's, it was awesome. It's great Brother, to be here in town. Thanks. Having thank you, you so much for having me.